All right, uh, thanks, Aaron. Um, this, this flows really nicely off of what Aaron was just uh, talking about. And uh, to kind of answer his, uh, his question, we're gonna talk about an effort that's been underway uh, within, uh, uh, within a couple of organizations recently, um, trying to come up with a way, uh, and this, this all feeds into what Aaron was looking for in his panacea there uh, for cross-platform cross measurement, was a way uh, for us to go and bind uh, media identifiers into the content in such a way that it survives the distribution and all the abuses that the content goes through on the way to consumers. So that's basically the, the problem that we're trying to solve is right now uh, we don't have a unified way of getting those identifiers in with the content uh, so that it survives. And that's a fundamental problem that we face. And if we can't solve that, uh, then we're not going to get to the place where we can do uh, nice, simple cross-platform measurement. So, you know, I, I like to say other industries have figured this out, uh, and you know, it may, perhaps embarrassingly, we haven't yet. You know, when you've got all the the various businesses that deal with hard goods, uh, you know, they've got uh, SKUs that uh, identify their goods that they're selling. Uh, they got these cool little U UPC codes, or some people are doing RFIDs, but they've got ways of embedding those SKUs in with the products um, in such a way that they survive distribution and and get down to the consumers. So. Um, you know, a lot of industries have this figured out. In our industry, we're in the process of figuring that out. Uh, for, for identifying the content, uh, we're, we're making great strides there between ad ID for uh, advertising content and IDER uh, for program content. So uh, we're partway there with that. So good news, give ourselves a bit of a check mark in that area. However, how do, we, how do we bind that in with the content? Well, we don't really have a way of doing that. And what that results in is this little brick wall here so that when we get down to uh, distribution to the consumers, uh, we don't really have a, uh, an unequivocal way of saying this content was consumed at this time via this distribution mechanism by this consumer. We don't have that because we're not able to bind these IDs actually in with the content. So that's, that's uh, in a nutshell uh, what we're trying to solve here. A uh, lot of words here. I won't read this you know, word for word, but um, you know, basically, uh, you know, are there ways to do that right now? Well, yeah, you know, kind of in the, in the professional area, uh, you know, in, uh, in media businesses, they do have ways internally of binding identifiers in with the content, and they can manage that content internally within their operations. But once you actually send that out to get to, to consumers, it gets stripped off. So... So that's not good. There also isn't really you know, a real open way of doing this. Um, on the other hand though, there are technologies that could enable this. There just isn't any standardization around this right now. And again, uh, to speak to, to what Aaron was talking about earlier, you wanna make this as simple as possible. And so yeah, I think you know, if we come up with a standardized way of doing this, we make this very simple uh, and enable uh, everything that we've been looking for in terms of cross-platform measurement. So, you know, is this purely a, uh, a, a play when it comes to measurement? No. Uh, there's a lot of things here, and I'm not going to go into all of them, but th by being able to identify content, there's a whole lot of things, and you'll see a lot on the screen here, a whole lot of things that you can enable beyond measurement. Measurement's great, uh, but we can uh, you know, enable a whole lot of things such as uh, second screen viewing, uh, more advanced advertising, targeted advertising to folks, just being able to track that, uh, those assets, that sort of thing. So there's a whole slew of things that get enabled. And like with any new technological effort you go through, there's always stuff that's not on this kind of a screen that gets enabled by, by doing something that's pretty cool and pretty open. So uh, Sim did some work you know, with the taxi uh, initiative initially on this and identified that this was something that needed to be done and needed to be done within a standard organization. So the one that popped up as, as making sense to do this under uh, is the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. Uh, then that, that is the preeminent standard setting body uh, for, uh, for the television and, and motion picture industries. So they know all about managing video and getting it out to people over various means, whether it's traditional or second screen, digital type of stuff. Um, so that, that kind of made sense to take this effort over there. Um, we, 
we started this group back in, uh, in July of last year uh, within SEMPTE, um, and uh, it's, been, it's been great. Uh, we started uh, back then. We've been meeting every other week since, uh, since then. What's really pretty amazing and I think validates the importance of this work is with a lot of these kinds of efforts, you get huge interest at the beginning, right? Everybody gets really excited. Oh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to make the world a better place. This is going to be fantastic. And then after a few months, those people start to tail off and, and you don't have so many people participating. That has not been the case with this group. With this group, it stayed at the same level of participation uh, you know, for the, the, the nine months or so that we've been working on this. So really impressive that we've been able to keep that. And I think it, it validates the fact that this is incredibly important that we solve this problem. What, what, what have we been doing? We started out by building a, a set of use cases. And I'm, I'm going to go over that uh, briefly for you. Uh, we thought that was the most important thing is let's, let's outline some use cases, say what would this be useful for, uh, and then that's going to tell us what the requirements are for any technologies that we use for this. So I'll go through some of the high points on that. Basically, that all led to a request for information that we sent out to the industry in general um, just before the holidays. Um, we gave people about six weeks to respond, and we said, hey, if you've got a technology out there that can help us in this area, bring it to us. Let us learn about it, and let's see what we can see. Let's see if this is even possible to fix it, and if so, what could we, what kind of technologies could be brought to bear on this? So we did that. We brought everybody together. We got some great responses to this RFI, by the way, uh, and then encouraged everybody to come to, to, to New York in, uh, in, in the lovely balmy winter that you all had uh, in February. <laughs> uh, but they did come. Uh, we braved the weather, uh, ha had some great presentations, gave everybody some equal time, um, and, uh, and, and presented what they thought would be good solutions in this area. So you know, what were some of these use cases that kind of drove all this? Um, this is, again, just kind of the high points. Um, obviously, number one, cross-platform measurement. That's one of the huge things that's enabled by being able to identify what content you've got. Uh, so that was, that was obviously number one. Second screen applications, we want to be able to synchronize with second, second screen applications, and it really helps if you can identify the content that's airing uh, to be able to do that. So, uh, so that was a huge thing. Um, you know, audience measurement in general, absolutely. Uh, very, very important, even with traditional uh, audience measurement. Again, being how do you measure it if you don't know what it is? Um, you probably thought there were, there were maybe three R's. There's the, the four R's that we've got here uh, we talked about were uh, rights, being able to track rights for content, um, research, royalties, and reconciliation. So that was kind of four things we kind of lumped into, into one area here. And every one of those areas is, is helped greatly by being able to, to identify the content. Targeted ad insertion, an area that's gotten a lot of attention recently, um, both you know, in, in digital advertising and as well as uh, in the cable world. I've been involved in a lot of that for several years. Um, very exciting possibilities there. But again, how do you do that without being able to really identify the content uh, that you want to target to people? And so that, that's enabled by all this very nicely. Um, so that's just kind of a, a, a high level view of some of the use cases that we looked at. And then from there, we were able to say, okay, here's the requirements for technologies that might be able to be candidates for this. Um, and, and so most importantly was, you know, we've only got a certain amount of space to put this stuff in. You know, what's really important to, a, you know, a media outlet is being able to get the commercials and the program out to people, uh, you know, with decent quality but without wasting a whole lot of bits along the way in doing that. And so we, you know, they've got a, investments in a lot of really cool equipment out there that strips out what they consider to be garbage and, you know, the stuff that's extraneous. Um, so we wanted to make sure that, you know, if we put these IDs in with the content, it isn't thought to be garbage and extraneous, that it's, it's something that, that is uh, important that, that flows all the way through here. So we need to find ways that we can survive uh, all of the, like I like to say, the abuses that content goes through on the way to, co to consumers. Um, so uh, so we, we looked at some creative ways to do that with ad IDs and IDRs. Obviously, survivability across platforms, we talked a little bit about that, uh, has to survive all of the different dis distribution platforms, whether it's you know, your traditional uh, big screen distribution, um, mobile, uh, you know, being viewed on a, uh, on a tablet, 
on any kind of portable device, whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't matter what resolution it's at. Doesn't matter what the kind of what the sound quality is like. That sort of thing. We want to make sure that, that this kind of stuff can survive. It's critically important. Also, it's a reality that a, a lot of content is not being consumed live anymore. People are recording it and watching it when they want to and where they want to. Well, we want to be able to measure that as well. So anything that we do can't just work in a live environment. It has to survive recording and playback as well. Uh, so that was an important requirement. Granularity, that became a big thing. Um, you know, ads can be, a lot of us think about ads as being 30 seconds long, but there's a lot of ads that are much, much shorter than that. So we need to be able to detect these IDs on the shortest of ads that are out there uh, and being played right now. Uh, so you need to be able to pick this up just in a few seconds. Now, with programming content, maybe we can relax that a little bit. So we looked at the fact that, well, your requirements maybe are different for IDERS than they are for ad IDs. Ad IDs, we need to be able to pick those up very, very quickly. Synchroniz synchronization across multiple platforms. Again, we need to, if, if you're consuming the content on multiple platforms, we need to be able to pick those up um, simultaneously and be able to, uh, again, identify the content. ID replacement was a really interesting one that we really didn't identify at, at the beginning as being important, but it's incredibly important. Just because you tag a piece of content with a particular ID, let's, let's say you've got a movie that you tagged uh, with a particular ID, that movie might get reversioned many, many times. And, uh, uh, you know, we've all seen that there's, you know, dozens or perhaps in some cases hundreds of versions of the same piece of content that are out there. Um, Eider does a nice job of dealing with that, of dealing with the different versions and being able to differentiate them. We want to make sure we've got a way that if you tag a piece of content originally with, you know, a certain Eider, but then it's repurposed for something else, that we'd be able to pull that out and put the proper identification on it. Um, one of the great use cases that was pulled out in this area um, was, uh, you know, if you think about sportscasts, uh, they, they borrow content from a lot of other sources. And that content would have been tagged with our model here with different identifiers. You've got one identifier on the, uh, uh, on the Fox broadcast of baseball, another one on the NBC um, football game that you're showing, that sort of thing. And they're pulling all these into a sportscast. That sportscast has an identifier too. So you want to be able to pull those off replace them with the, the identifier of the sportscast. So, um, so that was an important thing that we'd be able to do. Obviously, we don't want to degrade the quality of the experience for the consumer. That's, in, that's incredibly important that they not know that we've got this in there. We don't want to do something, that, something that's going to destroy their experience. So what kind of responses did we get to all this? Uh, most of the solutions, it, it's fair to characterize, focused on, on audio watermarking, which I think a lot of us are familiar with in the measurement in the measurement area that's been around quite a while. Although there were some other really interesting approaches uh, that were also suggested. I listed a, a few up here. Um, so, you know, that wasn't the, the only thing. And, and there were uh, really, there were pros and cons to the different approaches that were, uh, that were suggested to us. Um, so, you know, kind of one of the, I, I don't want to talk about our conclusions because we're still in the process of working on this and, um, but um, there may be advantages, just on a high level here, of coupling different solutions. There wasn't, there wasn't one real solution that jumped out and said, hey, I'm it, I can solve all your problems, I'm perfect. That didn't really exist. Uh, but different solutions had different pros and cons. So what I would say is kind of where, where we seem to be leaning uh, is, is perhaps suggesting a combination of things uh, that will allow us to accomplish all the goals that we've listed out here earlier. Uh, so there is not really one magic uh, magic bullet, but here's an example of, you know, audio watermark might establish that an ad played, but maybe then fingerprinting verifies that the entire ad played. Because without watermarking, we can't necessarily say the first X frames of the video air aired and the la last Y frames aired. So there's just an example of how this might work. Next steps, where are we going now? Uh, we're actually working on uh, completing a report back to uh, the Society of Motion Picture and television engineers uh, outlining uh, what we think is possible in this area and what standardization work we'd recommend. Um, that's due back to them the first week of June. Uh, if that's approved to them, by, by them, we, uh, we hope to be then initiating uh, standardization work shortly after that. Uh, we're not going to waste any time here. Uh, we know it's important to get this done. Um, 
questions, uh, I'll be around the rest of the day. Uh, so happy to address any questions you've got. Um, I, don't, I think we're out of time right now. So come and find me uh, yeah, out, in the, out in the hallway. And with that, um, I'm going to introduce you to our, our next uh, speaker, uh, uh, Charlene Weisler. Uh, is coming up uh, is going to uh, Weisler Media is going to talk about uh, going to have a panel on uh, on this topic that we're just all near and dear to all of our hearts with uh, cross-platform audience management. So, Charlene, come on up. <laughs>